Hi guys, my friend Adin, who is pretty large on X, just sent me this wonderful video of us talking with Destiny when he was here in Israel. Okay, so let me t start. It was published two weeks ago, and actually I didn't really talk about what I thought about Destiny or that meeting at all after it happened, because, you know, when you don't have anything nice to say, then... But now he's out, like, you know, I feel like he's out of the closet about him being crazy and everything I thought about him. And I told Adin at the time, just as we were there and he was like, oh, you're exaggerating. I mean, I was maybe a little bit tough, but uh, after that, I got when after he went wild with, you know, wishing lots of nice things for Republican supporters. I texted Adin right away. I was like told you because I'm an adult like this yes that was very mature of me but sometimes like saying told you so it's satisfying okay it's satisfying anyway so let me talk about meeting destiny first the reason I even went to that event is because AP texted me and he wanted me to get in touch with destiny and then we got to talk and he said hey I'm having like a fan meeting you should be there and I then came the same for the same reason and back then i was obviously a small channel so i was like okay sure i'll go for the clout yes shame no shame and the truth is i'm such a i have such an annoying personality that after listening to destiny speak i didn't even take a selfie with him yeah i don't have a photo with destiny even though we technically like there is a photo of me there but i didn't get close to him and I definitely didn't want to have a selfie with him because I felt like he is annoying and I'm gonna list all the reasons I felt he was annoying even before this video I'm gonna show you which depicts the part where Adin and I had spoken to Destiny. So first thing first, I had a pretty bad impression when I saw Destiny lecturing a huge crowd about how to represent Israel about the history of Israel he even said something I remember like it I guess it ticked me when he was like yeah and this and this person said that Israel is now fighting in seven fronts and the crowd was like yeah yeah true true and he was like wait you agree with him and all I could think is where in the world are you gonna get so many people how about instead of lecturing your clear lack of understanding you're not you don't know what you're talking about with all due respect and the impression i got was okay if this person was serious about what they're doing and really comes from a place where they care about what they talk about then they wouldn't miss an opportunity to speak to as many many individuals as they can in israel especially a person like adin which he really did ignore all the time and Adin has a very good following on X and had a pretty big influence especially during the October 7th events and like later on a lot of his tweets became super famous and got so he had influence on X that was significant and had so much knowledge to share and Destiny didn't take this great opportunity to ask a person that, by the way, he was in reservist at the time, maybe still now, but he actually had a gun with him and, and he's a fellow creator. And I just thought it's so weird to me that you don't talk to him to ask questions about what he thinks, like you come not to learn, but to teach. But you have so much to learn, sir. So much. And this is where I thought, okay, he does it for the benefits that comes, like the views, whatever. I guess it's like a popular subject. This is why he talks about it. But he doesn't talk about it because it's the right thing to do. Like he didn't come to Israel to learn from the people here what they think or feel. Not really. Like it's, it was more of, Every time that the, he realized that he was wrong about something, he was just blinked several times and there was like, oh. And, and maybe I'm just being nitpicky. Maybe it's a big crowd and things like that. But I really thought 
that it would have been way more impressive if he had taken this opportunity to also listen and not only lecture. And if you are meeting up with other creators, then done. I don't know. I just I just thought he missed the opportunity. Anyway, it just it I just had a it was I don't know how to explain it. I guess that was like a minor something that was like <laughs> I don't get it. Other that bother me. And then when he started speaking, obviously this is where I was like, I am not taking selfies with this person. Because okay, so in the beginning I was like I I was like, mm, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Gee, I'm very posh for someone who doesn't have that many followers. And even back then, I have had even less. I don't even think I had a 10K at the time. But I was like, oh, you know, but they have my reputation. And I was thinking, I don't want to be associated with someone who would tarnish my reputation long term. Damn, I was kind of on the money there, I think. Anyway, the more he started speaking, the more I thought to this person I'm not impressed I kind of I kind of don't I just I don't I didn't I wasn't not impressed at all and uh, that's it but at some point I was like okay we are here already and Nadine was like hey be nice I was like looking at my phone because I really didn't want to listen mm. but yeah but like the teens in Israel they want to protect but I mean does affect us this public opinion what, what's your opinion about like teens enlisting uh, i mean our image in the world like, yeah and he was like oh you should talk this and you talk, should say that and i was thinking damn you know damn well that it doesn't matter what we say because it's because it's not about it they don't care about and in the end in the end this is where i got up and i started asking questions about that were more real and suddenly destiny completely changes tune. So the parts I'm gonna show you guys is after I started questioning him, before that he was like, you should do this, you should do that, you should listen to their, you know, your opposition, you should listen to their opinions, you should cater to their sense of morality. And always like I was rolling my eyes and thinking, what sense of morality are we talking about? They don't have any sense of morality. And Adin was actually the, the person who, you know, raised his hand to ask that question, which I think he delivered in a way that Destiny didn't really understand. So I just butted in, in a very Israeli aggressive manner. I'm sorry, it was uh, pretty crowded. So I, I was a little bit assertive slash aggressive with the way I butted in because I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm, I just, I just, I just needed him to say the truth. And I got it out of him, to be honest. But I, I think... It, you know, it doesn't stick. Like teens enlisting, I, I mean, our image in the world. I mean, it, like, I mean, in terms of enlisting, I mean, if you're a Jew, this is your country, and this is the, it's only surviving on the backs of how many people are willing to join the military, like how much of your population, like in the early, in the 48 war, like, what was it, like 17% of the whole fucking population was mobilized to fight? Um, and the Arab states had fucking 10x, 20x the population and they couldn't they couldn't muster the same army. So, I mean, participating in your country in terms of military services, it's probably a proud tradition. It's probably important for the defense of your country, for your people, whatever. So, I mean, I think that that, yeah, thanks. Um, that's probably an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of in terms of world opinion, I mean that's I guess that's your. <laughs> am I allowed to say that's your cross to bear? I don't know. That's a Christian thing. But um, uh, yeah, Christ is king. <laughs> Do what? I think Israel has unique issues. Here's the one piece of advice I'll give you. Okay, if you're joining the IDF, okay, leave your fucking cell phone at home and stop taking stupid fucking videos, okay? Because everybody's fucking you with them, okay? And if you see. If you see a soldier, okay, going through a fucking drawer, and he, he listen, if you want to fucking wear a dress and you think it's funny, just don't fucking take a fucking video picture of it, okay? Jesus. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. To be honest, I kind of agree with that part. Some videos should be taken, but with a dress and, like, mocking people's underwear, that's, that's not that. <laughs> Others that would be unpopular with the West still should be taken because... You also have the Arab front to fight. And unless they see themselves getting humiliated, they don't get the message. So <laughs> I 
unfortunately, very different messages to very different audiences and it clashes all the time. So the West doesn't want to see some things that the Arab world has to see. Completely like respecting different things completely. It's really hard to satisfy both. Hold on, wait, I'm sorry. In Israel, it's hard to convince people. And maybe we should listen to some of the clues that people give us. Okay, to be honest, the crowd was kind of stupid too. Okay. Um, how do I do this? Well, even if it's a good idea, maybe we should listen. Maybe we should just... Uh, okay. Yeah, so the question is like, if you're Israeli, and I'm sure at some point there, there's like a mindfuck moment where you have to wonder like, okay, well, hold on. Have I been lied to about everything? And were we actually just completely fucking wrong? Um, th this, is, this is something that I've dealt with a lot. When a lot of people are saying the same thing, there is a corresponding true fact of the matter relating to this thing. It might not have anything to do with what they're talking about, but it's good to understand why they believe it. So if I, if I have a debate with Finkelstein and I've got a bunch of people saying like, oh, he destroyed you, he annihilated you, he was so much smarter, you're wrong and everything. Even if I know that, that, that the sentiments aren't, aren't factually correct, they're expressing something. And it's good to understand where that something comes from. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. Line of reasoning. It, it comes from them being... If, let me, I'll, I'll do it simple. If you're, if you're a black guy and you go to speak to a white audience and everybody says, oh, he was such a fucking asshole, but you were like the nicest guy on stage as a black person, then maybe it's going to sound okay, well, maybe these people have like some racial attitudes against black people. There, so there's an underlying truth, like there's a fact of the matter. That's nice, actually. He's right, like... Are they racist? That's a good question. The matter for why they're saying the thing. It might not be what they're expressing. It rarely is. But it's just good to understand what, what they're expressing. And then once you understand that thing, then you can decide, okay, well, is it a thing that I need to worry about? Or See, that this is what drove me crazy when I was listening him to him. He went to modes. He, like, he was making sense for two minutes. And then the two minutes later, I was like, did you forget what you said two minutes ago? I think this is what drove me crazy most of the time. Or what can I do? I want to change that perception, or can I change that perception? That's like the next step. That's a what I just described. There is an incredible. So he said all those things, and at the same time, uh, try to paint a map of how Israel should conduct its geopolitical maneuvering, which was so out of rea touch and reality. And I was listening to that, and I was thinking at this point, I think I was thinking like, he, he's he he knows what's real. And at the same time, he gives, he, he's like, why are you butting in then? Like, why are you having these strong opinions on how to manage something that you clearly don't understand? And yeah, I think I got, uh, by the way, I didn't really have anything to say. Adin was trying to say something. He was holding his hand up the whole time. A person that destiny invited to come, all right, as a fellow creator. And he ignored him, and that at that point I was like, I was tired of him ignoring him. So I was like, I have boobs. I'll I'll raise my hand. I think from the vibe I got from Destiny, I was like, I feel like he's the kind of person who would let me speak, even though I just wrote right, like even though like the person next to me was raising their hand for like an hour, and I was just on my phone. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even. I was still on my phone was uh, raising my hand. No, like, okay, because I uh, now that I'm watching it and like I'm remembering what I was thinking, I was like, this person gets it. And yet, like, at the same time, he tells us, so, like, he, I don't want to watch the whole thing, but I remember, like, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And oh, the fact that you have settlements is very bad. And, and I was thinking, like, all right, but you understand that we're that the person th that you're talking with might be a racist right so the sentiments might not matter so why why like is it, i was like that's 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 not genuine that's not genuine incredibly difficult process most content creators can't do it i don't know if a country can do it it's really hard um hi hi uh last question Okay, I'll do yeah. three. I'm doing three. I was like, three. push okay, that thing to talk. Oh, what time did you get here tonight? tonight? Adin was awesome. Like, oh. this is something he did, and I was like super impressed. He got up. He got up to talk. And I was like, ooh, now this is a man that has command. 
Oh, okay, I'll do three more questions, okay? Three more. You've got one. Go ahead. You've got one. Go ahead. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. They only force me to go. Okay, yeah, you're fine. I just Okay, go ahead. Yeah, right. Like, you probably remember me from Discord, like... Oh, oh, yeah, fuck. Okay, yes. Yeah. Aiden, right? I didn't, yeah. I didn't, oh, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> yeah, everyone, like, Okay, yeah. It's not like your name is being pronounced any better, like... <laughs> okay, whatever, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, what I want to ask is basically, like, when we try to appeal to the American audience, like, it seems to be, like, this connect between the average American guy, like, when we say to him, oh, October 7, it's our 9-11, like, it's may appealing to him, but to the American colleges or extreme, they say, oh, it's... It's like a blowback against you, like they justify 9-11 to some. Hmm? They weren't born yet. Who wasn't born yet? 9-11. Oh shit, that's true actually. There might be yeah. a lot of young people who don't yeah. even remember. Yeah, a lot of people who yeah. are protesting so against Israel now don't even the have 9-11 like in, in their, or in we their memory. what we mean, like in a positive way, but, uh, but was extreme American and the colleges know that they will say, oh, Oh, like I think here's here here's an issue when it comes to comparing your October seventh no, to nine eleven. I mean, my point is like, sh should the only way to change the perspective about Israel is is only if we change the perspective about America first? <laughs> like what America's perspective of of themselves? No, of itself. Of so, itself, because they see nine eleven as blowback, as something they just. But the problem with themselves as white colonizers, and they don't see that they have their the rights of being American, and they're not part of their. Own value system. Yeah, so but I. How can we, uh, as Israelis that have a similar value system, even talk to these kind of people? Yeah. It's. I look so I don't know, pretty, I have to say. Is it I, normal? Here's, here's one cautionary tale I would say that? against the 9 11 comparison, though, is that to get to the blowback argument, you have to do reading and you've got to do, like, what does it mean when they say blowback? For a lot of Americans, we saw on TV oh, fucking you're, planes. You're American oppressed Middle Eastern, blowback 9 11. Yeah, but that's like the way how. Palestinians, blowback but, that, but it's different, right? Like, the, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not saying that I agree with this, but yeah. the narrative is planes were flown by terrorists into U.S. buildings and some were killed. In Gaza, it was brave people breaking out of their prison to go and fight against their oppressors, right? Now, regardless of if that's true or not, yeah, uh, which obviously I don't think it's true, I'm, but it's... I'm it's not trying the, to make yeah. one to one comparison. Yeah. Try but to the, make but the more, moreover, you're saying that like, if there's a lot of self-hating Americans or people that are like... like so the only way to, ch to make them... La to make mm -hmm. change the perspective of Israel is only if we change first the perspective of the Americans. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a really hard thing to do. Uh, there's, when, when I'm arguing with people... I stood up like my body language is like, I cannot stand this person. Oh, I don't like him. <laughs> like, looking, watching back, I was like, wow, I'm tough. Like, I was like, I listened to him, decided he has not, like, he didn't depress me. I was like, I don't like him. <laughs> but listening to him now is like, he doesn't sound the worst. Maybe online, I'm used to people saying a lot of like, and I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm more tolerant about how people talk online than when hearing it in person. With people, there are times when I'm on the defensive and there are times when I'm on the offensive. I I can't speak to the totality of your foreign communications, but I do think that there are times where I feel like the Israel so i'm gonna let it play but i'm gonna just go to the ending point where at some point i asked like we talked about but are there any laws like rape is bad then there is no situation in the world where rape is good and he's like i mean i'm i chose right but it's like nope actually yeah no there is nothing in the world that is a consensus so i was like so i was thinking all right, so you, all your talk until now was basically irrelevant, uh, and you admit it yourself, and it's all about who does what. Israeli response to things should be way more aggressive rather than playing defense all the time. Like, the questions should have been... Oh, oh, I, I don't know how to do your fucking media. I, like, I can say a thing, but like, when people were asking questions about the hashtag eyes on Rafa, right? Like, before any question, before any excuse, before any reason for why, the question should be, why the fuck are rockets coming out of an area that's like five meters from the tents? That, like, anybody that asks you a question 
officer should have to answer that first. That Why? should be number one. Why? Why, yeah. Because, because every single thing that Hamas does when they fight is aimed towards inducing the maximum amount of civilian casualties. And that, that most people don't understand or think that, right? What, okay, what's the value consensus that you feel people agree on that is not relative to who is doing what? Nothing. Nothing? Everything is relevant. I think so. People will say that it's not, but I mean, I learned this really well when I fought with lefties. That I think people genuinely believe there are no bad tactics, only bad targets. You've got people that are mass... You, the, you know, I don't know in American politics, you know who Tara Reid is? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Tara, it's funny, he mentioned Tara Reid. I don't know who... Ta- I didn't know who Tara Reid is. Um, and that case, so that I'm not going to comment on it. I was like, at some point, I was like, Tara Reid. I was like, I thought it's somebody, but it was someone else. So, no, I had no idea what that is. So I was just listening. Tara Reid was somebody that made a a really wild rape accusation against Uh, Biden. And it was wild for, she uh, was like, it was a wild, wild, wild accusation. There were so many American skeptics that believed every single word that she said. You know, she's a woman, she's giving this blah, 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 blah. And these are the same people that are writing stories saying that, like, rapes on October 7th haven't happened. Show me all the victims that are all saying that they were raped. It's not possible, right? So, like, in this sense, like, the the skepticism and the way that it's applied, that clearly... There's a there's a there's a disconnect. If there's truly a principled stance, it can't be explained. I think a lot of it is relative. I yeah. really believe that fake tweet they made against me, for example. Do what? Like the fabric some you know bed and penada. Oh yeah, yeah Jesus. Fabricated a tweet that supposedly I brag about raping Palestinians. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly, um, so many suddenly believe it. Like I saw, Je, like Je, like all the all the you know, mm-hmm. you know the trees, Teresa, and all that Jackson, all that spread it. Like oh, it's here is the proof. Like this, this convincing, but not all the UN investigations about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. I got one more question. Soldier in the top. Where? Wait, am I where? Point him out. You're, so yeah, you got it. Okay, go ahead. They do know who can show his face. Do what? Sorry for the inconvenience. And they do who can show his face. Oh, yeah, you're fine. Okay, yeah, check your camera. Okay, go ahead. Question. So, uh, the majority of the discourse around the Israel-Palestine issue is uh, centered around the history and the legitimacy of, of the country and state of Israel. And I think, from my perspective, there's an issue of perspective on this on this problem. Uh, I was born and I've been living in Ashkelon for 25 years. If you know Ashkelon, it's the most <laughs> targeted by missiles that are higher in tier than mortars. Okay. Ever since, basically. Um, and I've been, I've grew up into this, I've been living this ever since childhood. And I think it's ridiculous to even bring up the idea that because of what happened, let's say Israel is not legitimate. It doesn't matter for me, as a person that did nothing to aid in this illegitimacy, uh, to be targeted and for my family to be targeted for all all this time, for doing nothing really, and for people to claim that I have no right of being here, of living here. And I I also think it's it's ridiculous to even entertain this idea because it's nonsensical. I understand. I don't think anybody believes the history arguments. It's just a talking point. If you show half of American students that are protesting a map of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, they're going to think that the West Bank is the one in the West. Like, they, like they'll make historical arguments, but you know, if you talk about like the occupation of, of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, and you ask them, well, you know, how long have they been occupied? And they say, you know, well, since 75 years. Yeah, they'll say since like 67 or something. Well, who occupied them from 48 to 67? They don't really think about that. Or when when they talk about who settlers are, who the occupation is, you know, people will say like settlers and occupation and people don't realize it's when some people say that when it's said over here, for instance, all of Israel is, a, is settlers and all of it is an occupation, the whole country. Um, so people bring up historical arguments, but I, I like the question earlier before about like principles versus non principles they're bullshit. Like people, people will say shit like, you know, learn the history. They don't have any fucking idea what they're talking about. They don't know any of the history. So you, and you can make historical arguments, but you'll find very quickly. And I'm sure some of you have probably fucking done this, that when you start asking people who have strong feelings about the history, they'll very quickly not engage anymore because they have no fucking idea what they're talking about so most of us have not lived through all of these things anyway we haven't taken that's just gossip from behind the scenes where i was like unimpressed i don't like when people who don't know what they're talking about are there to teach and and when i say that i didn't i don't mean the rhetoric the rhetoric parts like he understood clearly like that a person that is judging you might be judging you out of racism and not because what you're saying but at the same time, before that, I was like, I, it drove me crazy. Like the, his understanding of rhetorics, 
and like but then his complete confidence in the things that he believed in without knowing what he's talking about and without even using the opportunity to learn from those around him like I, I said before like where is like yeah this journalist said that uh, your Israel is fighting seven poor fronts and the crowd is yeah 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 and he was like baffled I was like oh man <laughs> And, you, and that was a leftist crowd that loved him. And I can assure you that it was 100% almost on the very left side of the Israeli map. That sounds like right compared to the left in many places. But yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe and see you later.